the single nature that happened when man fell in the garden. Jesus took that nature upon himself. He became sin. He became the nature of sin so that we can be given the nature of righteousness. Every demand of justice was met when Jesus went on that cross. And so for us, it becomes a free gift. Wow, it's wonderful to be here again. It's always a pleasure and I want to thank you so much for finding time to tune in wherever you are watching us or listening to me from. I thank God for you because you are a marvelous believer. This is the Marvelous Believers show on Awema TV. And uh, here we are learning who we have become in Christ, what Christ has made us. And the word is the Marvelous Believer. We are also marvelous. We are so superhuman. We are so extra. We are so blessed. And that is what we are about to talk about even now. So welcome as uh, we share the word of God in the next few minutes. I want to encourage you to share this link with someone. It's always nice to reach out to our loved ones. There are people who may never listen to you, but you can send them this link. And when they have time, they could listen. And I know the spirit of God will minister to them and will encourage them and empower them. We are all in the business of empowering the church of Christ, the body of Christ. So do share this link as we start. And uh, if you have maybe not been with us for some time, please remember to go back and just check on our shows, the previous ones. We are here every week and there is so much, so much that has been happening. I wouldn't want you to miss it for anything. So I do believe that we've all had a beautiful time over the Easter weekend. It was usually very nice when we are able to remember the work that Christ did for us. Sometimes we call it the finished work of the cross. I choose to call it the finished work of Jesus because it didn't even just end at the cross. The cross was just the beginning. There is so much more that Jesus did after the cross. And that is what I want us to continue celebrating today. We've just come from Easter, but I know uh, it is nice to always remind ourselves what is this that he completed? Which work is this that was so completed? And let me tell you, even as we're going to discuss the word of God, it is so completed that there cannot be a deficit. That is what Christ has achieved for us. Glory be to Jesus. Uh, let's just pray briefly as we start. Father, we thank you. And we honor you even as we share your word. We thank you, Jesus, because we are sharing the work the work that you completed for us. You went to the cross and you raised us up. We thank you because of what you have done in our lives. Even as we share this word, Spirit of God, we ask that you minister to us. Give us the spirit of understanding and revelation. Let this word, because you said your word is spirit and it's life. Let it speak life. Let it speak life into our spirit in the name of Jesus. We bless you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. For God so loved the world. That is, that is our scripture as we start. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We memorized this scripture since we were young, but it has never lost its power. That God so loved the world. And every time I think about the love of God, not just now during Easter, but any time I think about the love of God, I imagine how how he planned it from the beginning from the foundations of the earth the other day i was meditating on the story of exodus that god and i see redemption you see when you read even in the old testament wherever you read the bible the story the, the theme of redemption cannot be ignored cannot be separated you cannot divorce the redemption theme from anything that God was doing, even in the Old Testament. So when we look at the story of Exodus, uh, I was just meditating on this, especially because we were thinking about Easter, the cross and everything. And I see that God had told the children of Israel to put a, a sign of the blood on the door so that when the angel of death comes, he will not get into those houses. And right there, I could see a work of the blood. I could see a sign of the blood, like the blood was a sign to protect or to stop 
to protect the angel of God from coming to the people. You know, God from that, even in those days, he knew that he, had a, he, had, he was redeeming people and the one that the completion of this redemption would be the blood. The blood was protecting the people. The blood was, uh, I know now we have gotten too used to the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, wherever you are casting out demons, the blood of Jesus, wherever. The blood that was put there and it was preventing God from entering to those houses. Like God was saying the wrath, the, the, the punishment for sin is going to be so is going to be so costly the only thing that can pay for it can protect me from punishing is the blood and that was a redemption story right there and that has been carried on until when the fullness of time came and Jesus came and the blood hallelujah the blood became the redemption glory be to Jesus so uh, uh, when I was thinking about the completion of the work of Jesus, as we talk about Easter, as we celebrate what uh, Easter weekend means to us, right from the Good Friday and then the Monday, the Resurrection Monday, it is a whole process. And I just want to quickly go through it. I know we've, we've done a lot of uh, Easter teachings all through. It does no harm to continue even later after this, even in December. By the time we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we'll still be talking about what he has done for us. So uh, the first thing that we look at is his death, his death on the cross. The Bible says, uh, uh, I'll read a few scriptures, maybe not all of them, some of them. Uh, if you are there, you can revisit and maybe check them out. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse, um, verse um, 21, he became sin for us. That is where the whole story began. Jesus came, he was God himself. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Jesus was God himself. But when he came and he on, as he was going to the cross, what happened is he became sin. He took the sin of men. Not sins, but sin. The single nature that happened when man fell in the garden. Jesus took that nature upon himself. He became sin. He became the nature of sin. So that we can be given the nature of righteousness. And that is what Jesus did on that cross. As he died, he was saying, sin is finished. As he died, he was saying, you are no longer going to be in the nature of sin. If you accept the free gift of Jesus, you have received a gift of righteousness. So Jesus went to the cross and what he did is that he took the nature of sin. He settled every charge that is against man concerning sin. Because the only thing that separated man from God was the nature of sin that entered man when he fell in the garden of Eden. That is why men sin. They don't sin because they are, they are not sinners because they sin. They just see, they follow their nature. They, a person will sin because they are sinners. But it's not because, they are not sinners because they sin. If they, were not, if they were not sinners, they would not sin. So when you receive the nature, when you receive the Christ, your nature changes. The Bible says, the same Second Corinthians chapter 5, up there verse 17 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You become a new nature. You become a new creation. The old nature, the nature of sin dies away. And that is what Jesus did on that cross. He met every demand of justice because God is so just that it had to be paid for. Sin was paid for. Sometimes we say salvation is free. It is free, yes, to us. But remember, it was paid for. It was paid for. Every demand of justice was met. When Jesus went on that cross, he paid for every demand of justice. And so for us, it becomes a free gift. So it was done. He took the nature of sin. He became sin and he went to the cross and he died. He met every uh, demand of justice. He met every charge that was against us. But listen to the good news. Jesus said, yes, I have taken the nature of sin. Yes, I have become sin. Yes, I have redeemed. I have taken sin from them 
but that's not enough. There is more I can do. And that is why we become marvelous because Jesus decided there is no depth I will not go into until I am sure this man can stand as not condemned. This man can stand in authority. This is a man I came to die for. The job must be complete. He said there is not enough. Let me go there in hell and deal with this devil. It is not enough that I have taken the nature of sin. There is an authority that the devil took from man that I need to get back and hand it back to man. Glory be to Jesus. That is why every Monday we are here and we are insisting we are so marvelous. We are insisting that we are extraordinary. We are insisting that we have become a new creation. We have become a very special species. We have become the very royal priesthood. Because Jesus, apart from dying on the cross, apart from taking the nature of sin, apart from giving us righteousness as a gift, he decided I can win more for a man. I can win more for man. I will go down there. I will disarm this devil. I am not leaving him with any authority to oppress man again. I am not leaving him with any power to suppress and depress man again. As I have died for man, I am finishing this deal with even with the devil. And the Bible says he went into heads. Maybe we could read um, one or two of some scriptures there just to see what happened there. I'll read Colossians chapter 2. I'll read from verse 11. Uh, it's, the Bible says, In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sin, sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now verse 12. Buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive with him, having forgiven all your trespass, having wiped out the handwriting requirements that were against us, which were contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way and has nailed it to the cross. Now verse 15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Now, last the last four weeks, we've had a series that we were calling You Are Superior to Satan. This was one of the main uh, scriptures that we were talking about, that Jesus actually went and disarmed. The Bible says, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them. He made a, a public uh, scorn of them. Like he publicly embarrassed them. He disarmed them and he made it public that you have no power. I have disarmed you. You can read from Ephesians all the way to Revelation. You will not find somewhere else where the Bible suggests the devil ever got power again. They are recent. He was disarmed once and for all. Jesus, after dying on the cross, decided, I am not leaving the devil with any power. I am going right where he is and I am going to disarm him and make it public that he no longer has power over man, not over a new creation believer, not after I have taken the nature of sin, not after I have gone to the cross for him. I am not leaving any chance that the devil can oppress him again. And so the Bible says he was disarmed and he was, it was made public. Somewhere else I like what... Uh, Pastor Ben Isaac said, uh, as he was teaching, you are superior to Satan. He says, as far as the Bible is concerned, Jesus said, I have the keys for the kingdom. There is no other, there cannot be two keys. Everything, every authority that the devil had was taken. Jesus said, every power and authority has been given to me. Not half, not a bit, not remaining a quarter. The devil was left without any authority. That is how detailed Jesus went. As he went to that cross, he had decided, I am doing this once and for all. So he took back, the Bible says, uh, maybe let me read Revelation chapter 1 and verse 18. Uh, just Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. The Bible says, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of heads and of death. 
Jesus says, I have the keys even of heads and of death. I have. So there is no key that the devil was left with, not even of hell itself. He is not even in control. Praise be to Jesus. So, um, and then we, we see verse, uh, maybe I will not read that one, but please look it up. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Jesus saying he has the keys of the kingdom. He has every key, be it for the kingdom, be it for hell. Jesus has the key. He took every authority. He took back from us the authority that Adam had given to the devil. Remember this authority was handed over to the devil by to Satan by Adam. Right from the garden of Eden, if maybe I could remind us, when man fell, actually I, let me just mention this, maybe just as we, as I pass by. When, when, when man fell, I love uh, something that I think someone helped me. He wrote about it and it really made sense to me. Let me share it with you. When man fell, and, and God came looking for man and they were hiding. God knew he had given responsibility to man. It is man that God gave the responsibility of manning the garden of Eden. It is man that God gave the responsibility even over the woman that he had given him. And so when God came, obviously God had known what had happened. But he still needed man to own it up and maybe to be accountable. And he came and looked for man. He called for Adam. He didn't call for evil for anyone else. He looked for man because he expected man to own it up and say, you know, something has gone wrong. We are different or something. But man, immediately God asked him where he is. He said, the woman that you gave me. He like handed over his responsibility. He delegated. It's not a delegation. When you delegate, you delegate leaving you as, as a responsibility, but someone to help you. This one was handing over. He decided it is not me who is in charge now. It's the woman you gave me. And immediately Adam said that God now went to the woman. And he asked the woman. And the woman also decided I am not in charge here. It is the devil, the serpent. And actually God, let me tell you, God is so just that even, the, even with the devil he is just. So the minute the woman, Adam and the woman have said now the whole responsibility is on the serpent, God asked the serpent, what have you done? And the serpent was very clever. He didn't give that responsibility to anybody. He decided to own it. And that is why when you come to, John, to the book of Luke chapter 4, when he was tempting Jesus, he said, if you want the whole kingdom, I can give, I will give anyone that I want because it was handed over to me. That is how the devil puts it. He tells Jesus, if you can worship me, I'll give you the whole kingdom because I can give it to anyone that I want because it was handed over to me. That is how it was handed. And I want to encourage us and to challenge us, the marvelous believers. We have been given some responsibility as sons of the kingdom. Some of you have been given a responsibility even over the church, even over the family. You have every one of you, every marvelous, every new creation believer, every child of God has a responsibility. Some of you, God has entrusted with ministries, with spiritual gifts. I want us to learn to own them. I want us to learn to be mature. That's why Galatians Paul says to, in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1, that a hair, even if he be the hair, as long as he's a baby, he cannot be uh, trusted with responsibility. That is why we are here every time and we learn from each other that we need to grow up. We need to be responsible. Let's take even the small responsibilities that God has entrusted us, has honored us with, has given us the privilege as the sons of the kingdom. Let us, be, let us own them. Let us uh, be responsible. I know some of you listening to me, God has entrusted you even with ministries, even with spiritual gifts, even with children of God, churches. Let us be responsible. Let us own them. Let us take responsibility. We are the sons of the kingdom. There is no father who rejoices if the son is not owning up his business. Let us own it up. Let us do this work, the work of the kingdom. It is only a honor and a privilege that the father entrusts us. Anyway, now let me come uh, back to what I was saying. I was saying Jesus went and he took that authority 
from the devil because he had that authority. He said, I am not just satisfied with dying on the cross. I'm going to go there and pick that authority from the devil and hand it over to men. And now we have that authority over everything, over sickness and disease. When you go to pray for a sick person, don't even start saying, Father, heal this person. Command the sickness to go. You have been given that authority. It is you with that authority. When you meet a situation, it is not God. God has entrusted you. We have been given the responsibility and the authority. And so we take our, our charge as the sons of the kingdom. And then Jesus, after he is done with the devil, he says, there is one more I can do. There is more I can do for man. There is more I can do. This work must be complete once and for all. This work must be complete without leaving a deficit or a loophole. And the Bible says, he has raised us up in him. He went up. He went up and he carried us with him. The Bible says uh, he raised us up in him. Maybe I'll read. Let me read uh, the, the, the verse that talks about he has raised us up in him. Ephesians chapter 2. Glory be to Jesus. Karima sarakataya. Meke borike basakataya. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespass, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is, the fa that is how far Christ has gone. He decided, I am not going to raise alone. The Bible says Christ was crucified right from the, you know the things we are seeing now, God sees the end from the beginning. Right from the beginning, God had seen this crucifixion. Christ has, had already known he is going to come and die. He had died. The Bible says he died. You can read it during your free time. First Peter 1.19, he says it was for ordained before the foundations of the earth that Christ would die. And so Christ had already purposed. I am not rising alone. With everyone, with every new creation believer, with every child of God, I'm rising with him, with him inside of me. And so Christ rose with us and seated us in the heavenly places, the place that I call the position of honor and dominion, the position of authority, the position of possibility, right hand of God, the right hand of God, the, the position of power. When you say you are in the right, you are a right hand of someone, you are the person that he can trust with everything. You are their right hand. You, you work on their behalf. You represent them. That is the position that Jesus took us, the right hand of the Father. The Bible says he has raised up in him, even to the heavenly places, and seated us at the right hand of the Father. That is where Alpha Jesus has gone to make sure his work is complete. He has taken us to a position where we become the sons of the kingdom. He has taken us to the position where we become the joint core or, or core heirs of the kingdom. We were learning the other day that we, when we are being called joint heirs, it is not that he, he, he owns 50 and we owe 50. We equally own everything. The Bible says he has become the firstborn from the dead. First Corinthians, uh, Colossians, not first Corinthians. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18, he has become the firstborn from the dead. Actually also Romans chapter 8 verse 29, it says he has become the firstborn among many brethren. We are the many. He has become the first. When the Bible says he has become the firstborn from the dead, he is not saying he is the first one to raise from the dead. Because we know people like Lazarus also rose up from dead, even others. But he has become, the, we have just read that we were dead in our trespass. When you are separated from God, you are dead spiritually. And so Jesus took our sin and died spiritually. He also died physically, but even spiritually, he had died. By the time he became sin, he had already been separated. That's why he was crying and saying, why have you forsaken me? Because he had been separated from the Father. So he died spiritually. And Everyone who is not born again is dead in trespass. But the minute you receive Jesus, you become alive. And so Jesus was the first person to become alive in the spirit. He was the first person to be alive. And we are the other bonds. He became the firstborn of many brethren. We are the brethren. We are the marvelous believer. He has seated us in the right hand of the Father. 
He has made us joint heirs. He has made us equal heirs of the kingdom. Glory be to Jesus. That is how complete Jesus did his work. That is how complete Easter is. It was not just about the cross. It included going and getting that authority and dominion and handing it over to man and leaving the devil without power. Let me tell you, marvelous believer, the devil is so defeated that he, be he can become irrelevant in your life. It is possible to go through life without mentioning his name because he has no power, he has no space. He is irrelevant in our lives. Glory be to Jesus. We can talk about the, what Jesus has done and accomplished for us. And the last thing I want to talk about, apart from, because what Jesus did is he took us back to the Father. He reconciled us. What was lost, the relationship that was lost in the Garden of Eden, Jesus brought us back. The Bible says, glory be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has reconciled us back to himself through Jesus. He, through, Jesus brought us back to the Father, to the original plan. And the Bible says, he has given us eternal life. I want us to finish with we have received eternal life. I may not be able to read all the scriptures, but let me just read uh, some of those uh, verses. Like, uh, let me just read John, where Jesus himself speaks. The rest I will give you the references, and we shall read them during our free time. John chapter 3, uh, verse 36. The Bible says, verse 16 actually, where we started, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life or everlasting life that is how everlasting it is verse 36 he says he who believes in the son has everlasting life he who believes in the son has everlasting life eternal life is everlasting i don't know if we understand the everlasting of it sometimes when we talk about eternal life we, we think it is life that will come after rapture or when you have died. It is the life we have received right here on earth. We have received a life. The life you have received as a believer, as a new creation believer, as a marvelous believer. It is a life that will never end. It is the same life. Even after rapture, the life we have received is the life we shall carry on. There is sometimes when people rest, we feel like they have gone to start a new life. The same life they have received here just continues we have received everlasting life. You can read um, maybe first, uh, first John chapter 5, verse 11, 13, 14. You can read uh, Romans 5, 21. Maybe let me just finish with first Timothy. This is my last scripture. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. Kurima sakata yanda. Rekeshuka birayanda. The Bible says verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the present. Fight the good fight of faith because it's a good fight. It's already won. And then lay hold of eternal life. You have eternal life because it is the one that you were called to and you confessed. We are not talking of what will happen. We are talking of what has already happened. We have received eternal life. And let me tell you, it is eternal. It is forever. This life was already predestined for us. Anything that we ever need, anything marvelous believer we will ever need, be it justification, be it righteousness, be it um, wisdom, Christ has given it to us. He has given us eternal life. It is not going to end. This is an eternal life that he has called us to. That is how complete his death, burial, and resurrection was. Let's just uh, bless the Lord as we finish. Father, we thank you because of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that you did a complete work. It was done once and for all. And we shall never go back to bondage. We shall never go back to the nature of sin. You have given us eternal life. You have given us life everlasting. The Bible says, he that believes in you, though he dies, yet shall he live. Because this life is eternal and it is forever. We thank you for everyone that has received this eternal life. And if you are there and you have never given your life to Jesus just say thank you Jesus because you went to the cross for me and I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior I receive the gift of righteousness and of eternal life if you make that prayer you are born again you are a new creation the life and the nature of God is in you God bless you hallelujah we bless you Jesus and we give you praise in Jesus name amen amen 
Thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, I know we are blessed. The word of God is spirit and it is life. This has been the Marvelous Believers show on Wema TV. Keep watching it. Keep sub subscribing. Keep share sharing the link with all our friends. And let us all be blessed. Amen. Amen.